Good evening, hyperspinners. Today, we're going to be talking about how to get around the memory leak in hyperspin, so get ready. Alright guys, so today we're going to be talking about how to get around this memory issue with Hyperspin. So if you guys have been around for a while, uh, Hyperspin essentially has a uh, memory leak. I think it's within the transitions that happen between the themes. Um, you know, normally you would not see this if you don't leave your cabinet on all the time or your PC on all the time. But if you have a cabinet, some of the appeal is to have the cabinet on all the time, so it's uh, you know attractive, if you will. So what is happening here, and what's been happening for several years, is if you leave your cabinet on for, I don't know, let's say eight hours, uh, your hyperspin uh, screen might just turn gray, and you'll have just a little exclamation icon, uh, probably about the size of one of these uh, hyperspin icons here and what that tells you is hyperspin no longer has any resources to display a picture so all you've got to do is close the app and reopen it and uh, problem solved so I wanted to create a, uh, a more streamlined uh, experience if you have a cabinet and if you do choose to always have your cabinet on and I was talking to a guy that you might know uh, frostbite he is a hyperspin developer and uh you know more news to come there but uh yeah he, he's amazing he can just you know whip something up and on the fly here and uh you guys are worried about hyperspin not updating ever uh you know don't you uh worry here it it will happen soon so i had asked frostbite if there was a way to fix this memory issue without really changing the framework of hyperspin and you know he he had a uh, quick response, and uh, here we are. So the uh, response is what we call Hyper Refresh. And Hyper Refresh, all it does is just uh, reboot your Hyperspin uh, setup, and it goes right back to the wheel that you are currently in. And it's uh, really seamless, and it's, you know, for what it is, it's a workaround. So obviously it could get, you know, better. But in terms of, you know, not having to affect the framework of Hyperspin itself, uh, this is the best solution. So uh, what I'll do is I'll include this on the uh, FTP as well as the, uh, the download section and I'll include the link in the description below so you have that as well. But all you've got to do is drop hyper refresh in your hyperspin root folder. This can actually go anywhere but I chose to put it in my root folder just because I want everything to be nice and tidy. And what I did is I created an icon, I uh, just, you know, you can see HS is now green, so it kind of gives the symbol of, you know, refreshing. And you've got this hyper refresh XE as well. So uh, that's all there is uh, to it, to the setup. And when you open up the configuration file here, what you're going to find is the install directory. You're just going to want to change that to your hyperspin root folder. And that is it. This uh, timeout. I've got this set to six, uh, well, sixty thousand, and uh, you know that's essentially equivalent to one minute, and that is just so I can show you guys uh, on how this is working and setting up. But ultimately, once uh, we're done with this video, I'm going to be changing it to what is that four million or forty, yeah, forty-three million two hundred uh, milliseconds, because I, I want this to be set up for twelve hours. I feel like that's a, an appropriate uh, range based on the experience that I've had. If you want to play around with your milliseconds here, I'm going to set this to 12 hours and see if this uh, gets the job done or if I need to make this a shorter amount of time. But this timeout is in milliseconds, uh, so just keep that in mind. And yeah, that's, uh, that's it. So all credits go to Frostbite. Uh, thank you so much for uh, creating this on the fly. And uh, let's go ahead and give this uh, a try. So. All we're going to do now is instead of launching Hyperspin XE, we're going to be launching the Hyper Refresh XE. And what I'll do is I'll pull up uh, the task manager so you can kind of see that it creates a process and uh, 
you know, it basically just resets hyperspin. So I have a nested wheel. There's no additional setup uh, with this, uh, just as if you had a basic setup where you didn't have a, a nested wheel. So let's go ahead and open this and we will see what happens. So what I'm gonna do is open up Task Manager. So what we're looking for is under the background process, we see hyper refresh here, which is good. And I'm gonna go into another wheel here and you're gonna see that there's no additional process. So there's one process here, so that's good. And I don't know, let's just go into MAME here. So what's gonna happen here is in about, well, less than a minute here, we're gonna see Hyperspin uh, just closes out. So it's gonna be a seamless experience if you have Hyperspin up and running, um, you know, because you're not gonna be at the cabinet and chances are you're not gonna be playing for 12 hours. Uh, I mean, it's possible, but you can always change your milliseconds. So as you can see, I'm back to the wheel that I was at. And uh, yeah, that's that's a uh, hyper refresh. Uh, ultimately, it just fixes the resource issue. So you see, there's hyper refresh, and uh, yeah, that's that's it, guys. So I I hope that helps you guys. And you see hyper spin XE here, and this is the ultimate problem with that memory leak. You would see that uh, megabytes uh, increase over time, and that's ultimately when it starts failing. Uh, but no longer is that a problem run that cabinet all day long every day <laughs> whatever floats your boat and uh yeah i hope that helps you guys and we'll see you next time